in him. But we, 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 we struggle. Don't we struggle? Who are you in him? I mentioned Romans 8, 28. Let's go back to Romans 8. Starting with verse 5. Listen to this. For those who live according to the flesh have their outlook shaped by things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit have their outlook shaped by things of the spirit. So in other words, if, if I dwell on the flesh, then I'm going to be a fleshly mess. But if I deal with the spirit, then those things that would bother me in the flesh don't move me in the spirit. And so if I've been born again, I have been changed by the renewing of what? My mind. Therefore, I am now a new creature, and old things are what? Passed away. The reason why the old things have not passed away is because you don't know who you are in him. You still thinking you a bastard. Oh, yeah. You was born out of wedlock. No, 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 no. You are the very child of God. And ain't nothing unholy about you. But as long as you keep thinking that, you won't amount to nothing, and you can't help nobody amount to nothing. You got to walk with your head held high. You got to know that I'm no mistake. You got to know that God created you. You got to know that God called you forth. You got to know that God carries you every day you wake up and God lays you down at night. You got to know who God is because he said, I created you in my image, not to fail you, not to leave you, but so that you knew that you always belong to someone. Well, and who's the someone greater than me? Well, oh, Rev, I, I don't have a, I, I, I don't have a mom and dad. And your point is what? Because yeah. God can be both your mom and daddy, and what he can't cover, he can send and say, look, that's your mom and your daddy. Didn't he say, woman, behold our son? Son, behold our mother? So don't always look to me when you can look through me and understand that I will set you up with the stuff that you need. But you got to first think you're worthy of it. Church is full of folks who are broken. That's why they come. The problem is, that you keep pulling off the band-aids before the healing is done. You walk through the door, you cut, you hurt up, the spirit fixes you up, and as soon as you walk back out the door, you take it all off again. You deliberately take it off because you don't really want to be healed. You don't want to be whole. You like being down in the dumps so somebody can come along and say, oh, wow, what's wrong, baby? Hmm? How can I help you this morning? You're not feeling well? When you walk in the power, and we, I, I heard y'all talking this morning in Sunday school. And, and I preached about it several weeks ago. When you are born again, the spirit comes in. But that don't activate the power. Come on, Come on, so there's ultimately two births. There is the one where Christ comes in because we got enough sense to accept him. But the power of the spirit isn't activated until you get connected and stay in there. If you put a light source on a table and keep flicking the switch and it ain't plugged in, it's just a light on the table. That's all. Yeah, yeah, that's all. But when you plug it up and then you turn the switch, you realize that you've been connected to a source which now gives everlasting power. So as long as they connect it, the light will always shine unless the light itself burns out because the power is too much 
over a long period of time, if you don't know how to keep getting refueled or you don't change your ball from time to time, you're going to miss out on the flow of power. So if we don't know who we are in him, how can the power of the Spirit